Hello everyone, it's Artist and Tony, and I did get some feedback from Richard, which is cool. And since it is raining outside and it's nasty and we can't work today, I'm going to do a little work on this uh, just to show him uh, some a few things and get some feedback. Again, and this is what we do. We go back and forth. We get feedback. We do a little work. We get feedback, and eventually we get around to something cool. Well, I think we're starting off with something cool. But anyway, uh, the first thing you might notice is this roofing. Uh, I'm going to suggest something to Richard. Maybe he'll look at it. This And this is honestly, roofing is one of the hardest things to show in SketchUp because, you know, to make all these little faces, to make this profile, you have to have all these lines. And, it, and then you try to hatch it. You know, you try to put a... A color on there and a texture to make it look like the actual metal roof and then when you back off all you see is a bunch of lines so it's really difficult to show roofing in SketchUp anyway so this roofing uh, he sent me a link to a website in the UK and it's basically the material that we call in the in the States uh, our panel is this profile here and I've actually used this. This is actually an excellent product. It has these high ribs on it here. And you can use this on very low pitch down to like 112 pitch. And uh, even and it's even a screw down, which means anybody can put it on. Well, not anybody, but it doesn't take a, a very skilled person. The most uh, worry you have with putting this metal roof on is just getting the first piece nice and straight so that when you lay all the others out uh, it, it'll goes, it goes on. It is a little forgiving at the joints. I'm trying to zoom in here. Where it laps over you've got a little fudge room so that if you get if you come down and you're halfway down the roof you can straighten it out just a little bit if you have to. Because I've, I've used this material. I built this house right here. I tried to find a a picture of the actual roof but this just goes to show you that this R panel uh, and I like the Galvalum color and this is what I was this is why I wanted to bring this up uh, in this house right here I lived in this I built I designed and built this house I lived in it for three years and then sold it just recently this past summer and uh, my my utility bills were, I mean, $80. I mean, it was pathetic. The way I insulated this home and with the light colored roof, and that's what I wanted to mention to Richard, is that if you have this light colored, this Galvalum uh, R panel, it's awesome because it will reflect a lot of heat. Now you can use that, um, let's just type in green R panel, <laughs> see what we get. Let's go to images. Yeah, see they have it. What is this? Yeah, it's not the same thing, but it's that that color green. Um, you can. It's darker. You know, it's just a darker color, and it's going to absorb more heat. Um, let's see if I can find it right quick. Here we go. Yeah, this is the green R panel right here. I thought they were going to give us a close-up. Uh, but anyway, it's that same profile. It's a really cool profile. I like it better than the standard tough rib, which is what a lot of people use on residential, you know, uh, cabins and stuff. Let's call it, let's look at tough rib on images. We have a, a here it is. This is the profile. Tough rib, good lord, you know, you click on a picture, there it is. It's got smaller, uh, it's got smaller ribs and it's more of a lower profile roofing. It's only got a three quarter inch tall. You can't use this on anything less than like a 312, I think is what it is. Which Richard's roof is a four, the way I have it now is a 412. It's steep enough, you can use just about anything you want to, but it's a good product. I've used it on several of my own personal homes. And if you if you get the 26 gauge in this R panel, this Galvalume, 
it's awesome. It, you're talking 75 years, okay? I mean, it's just crazy how long these roof. And it's not that expensive, honestly. The screw down, you know, this is a screw down roof, so it has exposed fasteners. But I have never, I've been in this business for 40 years, and I've never even heard of a roof leak on a metal roof, you know, screw down roof. Because they have the rubber washers, and they go down really well. Just nothing to worry about. It's only like a dollar fifty dollar sixty a linear foot. So honestly, it, it might be a little more per square foot than your standard cheap shingle, but the life the life of it is long, and you can actually install this yourself if you want to put some sweat equity in. Uh, it's not that hard to install. So anyway, that's that's kind of my suggestion on the roof. I wouldn't suggest something that I haven't used or, you know, know works well myself. So you can see how much better that actually looks than on this drawing. If I zoom in, you know, it starts to look more real. You know, it looks more like the actual, I mean, this is the actual profile. This profile is the profile, but the colors are hard to get. And down here, if you use it for siding, you see it's going to look a lot better than this. It's going to look... Kind of like, if so I can get it at the right angle. <laughs> there's just, you don't see as many lines in real life. You know, there's not that many, many lines there. So anyway, uh, that's uh, kind of beating a dead horse on the roofing, but uh, I think that metal roofing is a good option. You can use green if you want to, but you're, you're going to have a lot hotter attic in the summer, in the summertime. Now on this, uh, let's go to the second floor plan. And let's get, get it back into perspective mode. And let's turn off the section cuts. Well, shoot. Let me turn off the roof then. Gutters, roof, R panel. Here we go. So Richard said he wanted the, uh, the wood stove over by the uh, door which I don't blame him I was just kind of shooting in the dark on this what angle would that be the reason I put it over there was because I felt like that corner was kind of dead and you can see now if you put it here I forgot exactly I think we have to have at least 12 inches between the wall this is the only thing about putting it putting it over here is that you kind of you know now you're looking at uh, moving well and see this is in coordination uh, with another thing he wanted I guess you could well I think you're out of out of luck putting a sofa in that direction you're probably just looking at you know oops get my co controls here you're probably just looking at you know this and he said he wanted to wall mount the TV, which I don't blame him. I didn't really like that stand. It was just the only one I could find in a hurry. <laughs> but then the, uh, we'll just kind of show the TV against the wall here. But you see, kind of, I mean, I'm really kind of getting ahead of myself because he wanted to make another change on this stair. And uh, if he does end up doing that, you know, I don't know. I'm not an interior designer, but you know, maybe something like that would work. Oops, I keep forgetting to, there we go. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, I kind of like the other layout where the stove is over here, but I understand um, it would be kind of nice if we could get the stove, really, you could almost, if you did away with this. Uh, it depends on whether you want it to be functional or decorative. If you want it to be more functional, you try to we try to figure out how to get it more in the center of the house. But again, that's uh, it depends on. I'm sure the wood stove that he's looking at is probably you know bigger than this. Again, this was kind of like the first one I ran across. It just symbolizes a wood stove. It's not the actual actual wood stove. We want to get the actual wood stove eventually, though. To make sure we've got room here 
got about four feet there maybe what is that oh we got a little more than i thought five feet so you could get you know three foot wide stove in there but the biggest change or the biggest thing that he mentioned was you know what i meant to do Dagum, i meant to save this let's go ahead and save this as a different option this is where i have to start thinking about drawing management because I don't want to, I don't want to lose anything that I've done. So I'm going to move this over here, and this will be kind of our floor plan option. I made this stair an L shape because this is the most efficient shape for a stair, and I kind of knew that already. But Richard wanted to see this. He wanted to see it as if it were a U shape, which you know, a U shaped stair. He was asking if we could turn, I need a new laptop. Y'all need to do a, a, a super fund, a super fund, <laughs> super fund, make group. It's funny, this, this laptop, I actually bought a new laptop and it wouldn't even run SketchUp. And then I realized that it didn't have a, the, be, uh, the best GPU and I had saved money. And um, let's go over here. I think it's three foot four. We need to go. Let's take this and put it back this way. Yeah, the only thing is when you do this, you have to have that four and a half inches between them. Okay, one option I thought of when I was editing this is this I had I noticed this because I hadn't brought this part of the stair down to uh, where it's supposed to go and it also made made me realize that if I can stop going inside the floor it made me realize that we can divide this uh, landing up into two pieces to save some space in other words we can bring this down Let's just bring this down to here for the fun of it for now, just to get it out of the way. And then we'll bring this down to here. And then we can bring this down. I've done this trick in the past. And then we can bring that one down that much too. Like that. You see what it does is it saves you an extra tread. We just uh, deleted one of these at the bottom. So what that does is it brings your head height back a little bit on the upper part. So let's look at the floor plate again. We need six foot eight by code. I'd like to have six, six foot 10. So to that one, you see seven foot six, six foot 10 right there. So that means that I can come off this one so you see looking at this looking at the floor now that means I can bring this upper floor so if I can grab it that upper opening can come back to this now see and I think I still have that six foot ten that's what I was looking for yeah six foot ten and five eighths and that gives you a little play there in case we're off an inch or so. And then you still have your six foot eight and you don't uh, run into code issues. Cause I'm kind of assuming that even though this is going to be in middle Tennessee, you might be in an area where you're going to have a building inspection and see, that's kind of, it's, that's kind of a big deal because now you can, we can bring this back over and I've got an idea if this was my cabin I'm going to show you what I would do there we go you see this is what I would do now Richard can tell me forget that mess but you know how I was talking about earlier trying to get this uh, stove in the middle of the house you know I, you could put it right here now it have its own little pocket, right? And you can even angle it if you didn't like the way. 
if you didn't like that, you know, it was, that would be kind of tucked in there and have its own little corner. That's kind of cool. Then you could put this back here where it was. Well, can you? You could if you wanted to. But anyway, that's just an idea. No matter how we do this up here, if I was going to do a U-shaped stair like this, I would definitely drop that landing down at that point and then that's going to save you that extra tread coming out this way. We'll see how that works, How what Richard thinks of that. You can see how the schematic phase works now. You go back and forth with your customer, getting the plan ironed out, making the final touches you know, to the plan. Once you feel good about that, then you can start to make the stairs look like stairs. These are just blocked out. You can put your handrails around, you can put your windows in, your doors. But until we get to the point to where the plan is correct, you don't wanna get into too much detail because you're just spinning your wheels. Again, thanks Richard, and just keep sending the feedback and we will we'll get her done eventually. Thanks guys.